Welcome to Circuit Master Class, your go-to channel for everything in power systems, transmission, and distribution engineering. Don't forget to check out circuitmasterclass.com for in-depth blogs and bonus content. We have provided the website link below in the description. Let's get started. Let's now understand the working of a spring-spring operating mechanism used in a circuit breaker by looking at each part and its role in the operation process. This is the very basic imaginary construction of a spring-spring operating mechanism used in a vacuum circuit breaker. This is the closing spring. It stores the energy required to close the circuit breaker. When the spring is charged, either manually or by a motor, it remains in a compressed state, ready to release energy for a closing operation. Next, we have the fixed hinge of the closing spring. It acts as an anchor point holding one end of the spring in position while allowing the other end to compress or expand during charging and discharging. Now, this is the cam. It plays a key role in converting the stored energy from the closing spring into rotary motion. As the spring releases its energy, the cam rotates, initiating the closing movement. Attached to the cam is the roller assembly. This helps transfer motion smoothly by reducing friction. As the cam turns, the roller moves along its surface and drives the mechanism forward. Here is the hook. It functions as a mechanical latch. It holds the closing spring in its charged position. When a close command is given, this hook releases the spring, allowing it to act. This is the fixed hinge of the opening spring. Just like with the closing spring, this hinge holds one end of the opening spring in place. Now this is the opening spring. It's responsible for opening the breaker. Once the trip command is received, the opening spring releases its energy, pulling the moving contact away and interrupting the circuit. This is the vacuum interrupter, the heart of the breaker. Better to say, it is the cross-sectional view of a VI or vacuum interrupter. It contains the moving and fixed contacts, where the actual arc interruption takes place. When the contacts separate, the arc is formed, but it's quickly extinguished in the vacuum environment. Right here, we see the bellow. It's a flexible, sealed component connected to the moving contact. The bellow allows the contact to move while maintaining the vacuum inside the interrupter. This is the fixed contact which stays stationary inside the vacuum interrupter. During normal operation, the moving contact touches this to complete the circuit. We now move to the lever. The lever connects the cam and the operating mechanism to the insulating rod. It ensures that mechanical movement from the spring gets properly directed to the contact assembly. Finally, this is the insulating rod. It transmits the motion from the lever to the moving contact. Since it's made of insulating material, it ensures that mechanical motion is safely delivered without electrical conduction. In operation, once the closing spring is charged and released, it rotates the cam, moves the roller and lever, and pushes the insulating rod forward, causing the moving contact to touch the fixed contact and close the circuit. During a fault or opening command, the trip coil releases the opening spring. The spring pulls the contact back through the same mechanism, opening the circuit. The bellow ensures that vacuum integrity is maintained throughout. This is how each part of the spring-spring operating mechanism works together to ensure safe and reliable circuit breaking in vacuum circuit breakers. Now, we shall discuss in more detail, step by step, the functioning of each part of the mechanism from the beginning again for better understanding. Suppose initially the closing spring is in discharge condition and the supply of the motor is switched off. Yes, we have considered the mechanism is electric motor driven. The manual and hand driven mechanisms are almost the same as that of the motor driven. So we will not discuss that separately. Here, the only difference is that we need to drive the gear by handle. And in motor driven, it is driven by a DC or AC motor. An AC motor is enough, but some manufacturers design with DC motors. 
the philosophy is that when there is a total power failure, then also the circuit breaker can be operated. Whatever the condition of the circuit breaker may be, whether it is in an open or closed condition, the spring is uncharged, meaning it is in a relaxed, expanded condition as soon as we switch on the motor supply. The motor starts running, and with the gear lever arrangement, the closing spring gets compressed. The hook part of the mechanism mechanically latches or holds the closing spring in the charged or compressed position. Here, you should remember that the charging of the closing spring is not related to the open or close condition of the circuit breaker. Here, the breaker is now in open condition. Now, if we apply the close comment to the breaker, the plunger of the closing coil makes the hook removes the latch of the closing spring. Therefore, the closing spring expands. It rotates the cam, moves the roller and one side of the lever downward. Therefore, the other side after the middle hinge of the lever goes up and thereby it pushes the insulating rod upward, causing the moving contact to touch the fixed contact and close the circuit. This portion of the lever goes down and hence this portion of the lever goes up to close the circuit breaker. During the expansion of the closing spring, the opening spring is deformed, meaning it is forcefully expanded. In other words, the stored potential energy of a closing spring is partly used for closing operations. Rest of the potential energy of the closing spring is used to expand the opening string. This opening spring is sometimes called a trip spring. As the spring is discharged during the closing operation, after completion of the closing operation, the spring begins to recharge. But remember the charging of this closing spring does not have any relation with the tripping or opening operation of the breaker. The breaker trips by means of trip spring only. Whatever may be the condition of closing spring, whether it is charged or in uncharged condition, since the trip spring is expanded during closing operation, the breaker has become ready to trip or open. As it is already told, during a fault or opening command, the trip coil releases the opening spring. The spring pulls the contact back through the same mechanism, opening the circuit. The bellow ensures that vacuum integrity is maintained throughout. The main advantage of this spring-spring mechanism is that it can perform an open-close-open -open operation if the breaker is in closed condition when the motor supply fails. It can also perform one close and the next open operation if the motor supply fails when the breaker is in the open condition. There are many advantages to a spring-spring mechanism. The spring-spring operating mechanism is reliable, fast, and easy to maintain. It works using mechanical springs, so it doesn't need any oil or air systems, which means fewer chances of failure and no leaks. It is compact in size, uses very little energy, and can operate quickly during a fault. Even if power is lost, the stored spring energy allows the breaker to trip safely, making it a very dependable system. Despite its many benefits, the spring-spring mechanism also has some drawbacks. First, the springs and moving parts can wear out over time and may need replacement after many operations. Second, the energy stored in the spring needs to be recharged after every operation either manually or using a motor, which might cause a small delay for reclosing the circuit breaker. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like and tap the notification bell. Got questions or want us to cover a specific topic? Leave a comment. Thank you.